The following is a special presentation by Ali RX. You thought they were extinct, but now they're back. Mastodon, Pterodactyl, Triceratops, Saber Two Tiger, Tyrannosaurus, and they're coming to Fox. Power Rangers! Don't miss the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers series premiere Monday on Fox. On Saturday morning, August 28, 1993. A phenomenon was born. Or should I say, a more phenomenon. It was a show that took the nation and then the world by storm. That show was called The Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. In an era where Saturday mornings and weekday afternoons were dominated by cartoons, from out of nowhere comes a live action adaptation of a foreign TV series with spandex rubber monsters, and giant freaking robots! It was a show like no other. Well, in America at least. The show centered around five teenagers with an attitude. Jason, Zack, Kimberly, Billy, and Trini. They would then be teleported by Zordon and Alpha to be given special powers to fight the evil Rita Repulsa and her henchmen. With these new powers, they became the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And when the battle got serious, they summoned their giant robots known as Dinosaurs, based on five different prehistoric creatures. The Mastodon, the Pterodactyl, the Triceratops, the Sabertooth Tiger, and the Tyrannosaurus. These would then combine together to form the Megazord. Kids at the time were blown away by this. Later on in the series, a Six Ranger was introduced, Tommy the Green Ranger. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers was an adaptation of Kyoryu Sentai Juranger from the long-running Super Sentai series in Japan. Rather than straight up dubbing it in English, like Godzilla, Ultraman, and other old Tokusatsu shows that made it to the States, it would take only the Rangers, the Zords, and villain scenes and combine them with brand new footage to relate to American audiences more. This worked, and Power Rangers became a huge success, spawning an entire franchise with 25 seasons and counting, as well as three feature-length films. The TV series would also continue to adapt footage from future Super Sentai shows. And thanks to Power Rangers, as well as the internet of course, longtime fans would eventually discover Super Sentai as well as many other tokusatsu-related shows like Kamen Rider. Of course, Power Rangers was not without controversy. Some parents also felt the show was too violent for kids. That didn't stop kids from watching though because they knew the Rangers were positive role models. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers was THE kid show to watch in the early to mid 90s. The merchandise was hot, kids talked about it in school, it was EVERYWHERE. And like all other popular franchises, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers would spawn several video game spin-offs. In fact, it spawned a lot more games than the Super Sentai series it's based off of. And these games were all on the contemporary Sega and Nintendo platforms. The Genesis, aka the Mega Drive, Super Nintendo, Sega CD, Game Boy, and Game Gear. But the question is, are they good? Are they bad? Or are they just okay? Well. Let's find out on this retrospective, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers games. So the first one we're going to take a look at is Mighty Morphin Power Rangers for the Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive, released in 1994. I remember playing this game at a neighbor's house when I was a kid, and I enjoyed it quite a bit. Anyway, right off the bat, you see the Power Rangers logo and hear the theme song. Anyway, the story begins with Rita and her henchmen at the Moon Palace as they begin a plan to destroy the Power Rangers and take over the world. And I gotta say, the cutscenes look amazing here. I think they digitized the actors here, much like in Mortal Kombat. But why does Rita have a milk mustache here? 
Anyway, the game is your standard one-on-one -on -one fighting game, much like Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat and other contemporary fighters. You have two types of basic attacks, normal and fierce. You use these attacks along with the D-pad to perform different combos. To learn specific combos for specific fighters, you can find them in the game's instruction manual that comes with it. And you don't really need the 6 button controller, the standard one will do just fine. In single player mode, you can play as the 5 rangers, and a bit later on, you can play as Tommy the green ranger. My favorite out of the 6 playable rangers in this mode are Zack the black ranger and Trini the yellow ranger. Zack has his spinning attack with his power axe, and Trini has her drill and dive attacks with her power daggers. And both do a lot of damage. Jason is a bit disappointing though. He along with Tommy were my favorite rangers in the series, but his moveset in this game isn't really that great. After you defeat the enemy, in the second round, the enemy grows into giant size. Or in the case of the green ranger, he calls his dragon zord. Once that happens, the rangers call forth their Megazord and it becomes a Zord battle. The Megazord is incredibly powerful, its sword does a lot of damage as does its fireball attack. The Dragon Zord is interesting to say the least, as all of its moves heavily rely on holding one of the buttons on the D-pad for one or more seconds and then pressing two other buttons. I think I prefer playing as the Megazord more, and I wish Battle Mode Dragon Zord was a playable character here. In single player mode, before you unlock the Green Ranger, you fight the evil Green Ranger who has a slightly better moveset due to him using the Sword of Darkness. You can play as him in 2 player mode using a code. The other villains can also be played in 2 player mode. The game is very short, you only fight 5 characters, Minotaur, Evil Green Ranger, Manamo, Goldar, and Cyclopsis. I mean come on, there are 60 episodes from the first season alone, yet they could only add 5 villains? Really? And only 2 of them are monsters of the week. Personally, I think the game should have had around 8 to 10 stages. The graphics are very good, the rangers and villains look exactly like their TV show counterparts. And considering it's based off of a show with practical effects, spandex and rubber monsters, I'd say it's quite impressive. What I don't like is that you don't get a lot of variety during ranger battles. All you do is fight on the same bridge every time. The Zord and Giant Monster stages have much more variety which is kinda dumb. I mean only the Zord battles give variety, but the ranger battles don't? The cutscenes especially look great, they're 100% faithful to the TV show. And by the way, you gotta love Cyclops' transformation here. The music is fine, it's just that there's not many memorable tracks that I can go back and listen to. Although I do love the Dragon Zord theme. I also love the voiceovers in this game, they were pretty cool for the time. Oh, and if you beat the game on the hardest difficulty setting, you get a special thank you message at the very end. Yeah, that that's all it is. It's nothing special. All in all, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers for the Genesis is a good fighter, but not a great one. There's a pretty good chance you'll get bored after a while. I give it a silver. Next up is Mighty Morphin Power Rangers for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, also released in 1994. And just like the Genesis version, it opens up with the logo and the theme song, but the theme song here sounds a lot better. Oh no, the city is under attack! Oh no, it's Rita! What are we gonna do? So here you get to choose between the five teenager- Wow, they made Zack look really ugly in this game! Anyway, this game is your typical 16-bit side-scrolling beat-em-up with pretty simple and responsive controls. Each character plays and feels different from each other. 
For example, Kimberly has weaker punches than the other characters, and Zack can breakdance after repeatedly pressing buttons. However, once you reach the middle of each stage, it's morphin' time! Not only do you become much stronger, but you can now attack with your signature weapon. Even if each ranger has a different signature weapon, they can also be used the same way. Even Kimberly can use her bow as if she were using a bat or a sword. Pressing the X button will activate the Dino Bomb. Each ranger's Dino Bomb is different, but they all do the same amount of damage. I highly recommend saving it for the boss though, since it'll help you get through it much faster. I like how there's a variety of putties with different colors and weapons. The standard gray putties can be beaten easily, but the purple, green, and brown ones are somewhat stronger and come with knives and other weapons. And some even use rifles! Yeah! Rifles in a Power Rangers game! You never saw that in a TV show, although rifles and other guns were common in Super Sentai. Each stage feels somewhat fresh. For example, in Area 3, you can swim underwater and in some stages you can climb up walls. Plus there are traps and beams to avoid. There are a grand total of 7 stages, or areas, and you only battle in human and ranger form in the first 5. The first 5 bosses are Bones, Gnarly Gnome, Eye Guy, Genie, and Dark Warrior. After that, you finally summon your Megazord for the last 2 stages. And this is what I don't like about this game compared to the Genesis version. Here, you only play as the Megazord twice, as opposed to having both Ranger and Zord battles in all 5 stages in the Genesis version. Plus the Megazord battles here kinda suck compared to the Genesis version. They're way too easy, especially when you fight against Cyclopsis. Cyclopsis was badass and a beast in the Genesis version. He could throw lightning attacks at you, and he was tough. But here, he's a joke! That, and you could do a lot more moves in the Genesis version Zord battles. Here, not so much. In fact, the entire game feels too easy, and there's no difficulty setting in the options menu. So when you beat it, that's it. You're done. And the biggest disappointment of this game is the fact that the Green Ranger is not in it. Yup. No Green Ranger, no Dragon Zord, no Battle Mode Dragon Zord, no Mega Dragon Zord, no Ultra Zord, nothing. The graphics are good, the characters resemble their TV show counterparts, for the most part. See, the human characters look almost identical to their TV show counterparts, save for Zack of course. But in Ranger form, they all have the same exact body type for some reason. Big and muscular male Ranger. Even the pink and yellow rangers have this body type. All they did was a simple palette swap and that's it. And it's especially sad because in the Genesis version, the rangers had more accurate body types. Eh, at least the backgrounds look good and all the monsters resemble their TV show counterparts. The cutscenes are good but nowhere near as good as the ones in the Genesis version. I mean take a look at the Megazord sequences. Which one is more closer to the show? Exactly. The music is awesome, and this is where the game shines the most. It has songs that sound powerful and make you feel pumped. But most importantly, that boss battle theme song! I freaking love it, it's so damn good. All in all, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers for the Super Nintendo is rather disappointing. It's a rental at best. The Genesis version is definitely better. I give it a bronze. Next up is Mighty Morphin Power Rangers for the Game Boy, also released in 1994. And by the way, this is how the game looks on the Super Game Boy. It's the only way to play this game in color. Otherwise, you're just gonna get this. Yeah. And let me tell you, this game is absolutely terrible, whether you're playing it in color or black and white. Just like the Super Nintendo version, you only play as the five core rangers. Now, don't be fooled by the character selection screen. You can only play as their ranger forms, but no matter which character you pick, 
They all suck in this game. The problem with this game is that it's just not fun at all. It's a beat em up, but a really bad one. And don't get me wrong, there are way better beat em ups on the Game Boy than this pile of garbage. The very first problem you'll notice is that all the putties come charging at you exactly the same way. And all you do is punch or kick them once, and that's it. The putties here are way too easy in this game. In fact, all the enemies are too easy. But don't worry, there are frustrating moments in this game as well. The hard parts aren't the enemies, no. The hard parts are the traps. Like here in level 3 for example. You have to be very precise with your jumps, or else you get hit by the spikes. And this can take a lot of damage of your tiny ass health meter. You know which part I hate the most? The rolling boulders in level 4. When they come down to you, you can't duck and kick them. You can only punch while ducking, and the problem is that their punches are way off. The only way to beat them is to run from them and jump kick them on the edge. And that's another thing, you don't have many attacks, and no matter which ranger you play as, they all play exactly the same. You can't even use your signature weapons, not even the pistol that they use sometimes. So it doesn't matter which ranger you pick here, the only difference they have is the color, and you can only see that on the Super Game Boy. What a piece of trash game. So after you beat each level, the boss battle is also a Zord battle, much like the Genesis version. This is the best part of the whole game, but that's not really saying a whole lot. All the bosses here are really easy to beat. You just gotta follow their pattern, which is quite easy to follow. The five bosses are Squat, King Sphinx, Babu, Goldar, and Rita. And after you beat each boss, you get bonus stages similar to the ones in Karate Champ on the NES which was also a bad game. The graphics are pretty good for a Game Boy game. The characters for the most part resemble who they're supposed to be, but once again, all the rangers have the same body type. But in the case of the Game Boy, it's completely understandable, since there's hardware limitations. I just wish they didn't all play the same though. The backgrounds look fine, nothing to complain about here. And as I mentioned earlier, Goldar is one of the bosses in this game. Now, let me ask you this, does that look anything like Goldar? I didn't think so. You know, when I first played this game, I could not tell who that was, but when I looked up information on this game and found out who he was, I was like, that's Goldar? Are you freaking serious? No way, like no way, you, you gotta be kidding me. I could not believe it at all, I could not believe it. That guy looks nothing like Goldar. Also, the legs on the Megazord during the cutscenes look kind of funny. The music sounds good, it fits the tone of the series, and even the 8-bit rendition of the theme song sounds pretty good. All in all, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers for the Game Boy is utter trash. Do not buy it. I mean, for God's sake, the Jew Ranger game on the Famicom was way better than this. Now you're probably wondering, is there a better portable Power Rangers game? Well, that's what we're about to find out in the next one. And that is Mighty Morphin Power Rangers for the Sega Game Gear, also released in 1994. And I gotta say, this version is pretty damn good. In fact, I'd say it's my favorite one so far. You start off with the option to choose between the five teenagers. And isn't it sad that Zack looks a lot better here than he does in the Super Nintendo version? Man, this game is a HUGE improvement over the Game Boy version. Hell, I'd go as far as to say that it's better than the Super Nintendo version, and hell, even the Genesis version. So anyway, this game is somewhat of a mix between a beat-em-up and a one-on-one -on -one fighter. You start off fighting a bunch of putties in different colors, something that they probably borrowed from the Super Nintendo version, and sometimes Goldar comes in and attacks you. After that, you face the stage's boss. Controls are very simple to use, but they're very responsive and you can do various moves and combos, which is surprising for a portable game. Each ranger plays and feels differently, which is another big improvement over the Game Boy version, and all of them use their signature weapons. And I gotta say, Jason plays a lot better here than all the other versions I've played. Like the Genesis and Game Boy versions, the second half of each stage is a Zord battle against the boss. 
The Zords battles here are slightly watered down compared to the Genesis version, but they're still quite fun to play. And like the Genesis version, you fight the evil Green Ranger halfway through the game. Once you beat him, you now have the option to play as Tommy the Green Ranger. The Green Ranger is easily the best ranger in this game. Matter of fact, I think I like playing as him here more than in the Genesis version. And after you unlock him, not only do you get to play as the Dragon Zord during Zord battles, but you can now also play as the Battle Mode Dragon Zord! Thank you! Thank you, Ben Presto! We finally have a game where you can play as the Battle Mode Dragon Zord. And it is awesome! It does destroy you can like uppercut and it does a lot of damage against the opponent. There are a total of 7 stages. That's a bit longer than the Genesis version and considering it's a portable game, that's quite impressive. The game's bosses are King Sphinx, Nasty Knight, Evil Green Ranger, Shell Shock, Polluticorn, and Cyclopsis. Goldar serves as the sub-boss of every stage, but you don't beat him until the very last stage before you face Cyclopsis. Like the Genesis version, this game has a versus mode where you can play as any of the characters in the game, including the villains. But what's great about this version is that you can versus against the AI for practice. So here's me playing as Cyclopsis against Goldar, and man, I love playing as Cyclopsis. He is badass. The graphics are very good, especially for an 8-bit Game Gear game. All the characters 100% resemble their TV show counterparts. And the backgrounds look great as well. They all resemble scenes from the TV show. And look at the cutscenes here. It's like watching clips from episodes of the show. I'm very impressed. The music is a little on the weak side, but it's still good. Like all the other version, it features the theme song, but I think it plays a little too fast here. All in all, this is easily the best version of the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers game thus far, and I have little to no complaints about it. It addressed pretty much everything I criticize about the other games. It's a shame it's only on the Game Gear though. I give it a gold. Now we move on to Mighty Morphin Power Rangers The Movie. By this time, the series had completed its second season. Lord Zed would replace Rita as the main villain, the Zords were upgraded to the Thunder Zords, Tommy had become the White Ranger, and Jason, Zack, and Trini were all replaced by Rocky, Adam, and Aisha, respectively. The White Ranger, Zords, and many of Zed's monsters were taken from the Sentai series Gosei Sentai Dai Ranger and Lord Zed will be the first original villain in the series. With the massive success of the series, it was only a matter of time before a theatrical film was released. And while this movie isn't canon with the series, it does share many elements from the series, including all the stuff I just mentioned. However, a new villain is introduced and his name is Ivan Ooze. Not only that, but the Rangers would then get new powers, the Ninjetti and the Ninja Zords, based on the Sentai series Ninja Sentai Kaku Ranger. These new powers would be reintroduced in the third and final season of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And just like the series, the movie would also see a few video game adaptations. So the next one we're going to take a look at is Mighty Morphin Power Rangers The Movie for the Genesis Slash Mega Drive, released in 1995. And man, I love that thunder and lightning on the title screen. It just looks so damn cool. But is the game itself any good? Of course, the story in this game is almost completely derived from the movie. However, it also took some creative liberties and borrowed storylines from the second season. You'll see in a moment. Unlike all the other games, you start off with all six rangers right from the get-go. Which of course makes sense if you follow the series. And of course you see Rocky, Adam, and Aisha, but you'll notice a subtle change later on in the game. Now even though this is based on the movie, for some reason the Rangers are in their TV show suits all the time, even during the movie stages. I guess Ban Presto felt the movie suits were too bulky? Honestly, I don't blame them. Anyway, on to the gameplay. This game is an arcade style side scrolling beat em up similar to the Super Nintendo version of the first game. But this game is a HUGE improvement over that version. Controls are simple and responsive, and you can do very simple combos, but the Rangers are still fun to play as. You have two types of basic attacks, A to do a spin kick, and B to punch. You can do more moves by pressing different combos with the D-pad. 
and much like the other games, all the rangers use their signature weapons. You can also collect power coins for increasing your high score, as well as regaining your health. Definitely recommend getting these. This game feels a lot more like a true 16-bit beat-em-up than the Super Nintendo version of the first game. In fact, I'd say it's comparable to the likes of Streets of Rage 2, Final Fight, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 4, Turtles in Time. It even has the semi-isometric gameplay that most beat-em-ups have. And for the first time ever, this game has two-player co-op. Got a friend who is also a Power Ranger fan? Invite him or her over to play! This game has a total of 6 stages. Each stage begins with a side-scrolling Ranger battle, but the boss battle is a one-on-one -on -one Zord battle, much like the other games. And by the way, the Ninja Zords don't look like the movie versions. They're actually based on the TV series version, which didn't even air yet in the States. Oh, and please don't play as the Falcon Zord, it kinda sucks in this game, and you'll get beaten easily. Now, as I said earlier, this game borrows storylines from the movie as well as the second season. In the first couple of stages and the final stage, the game takes place in the movie. But stages 3 and 5 are based on flashbacks of when Rocky, Adam and Aisha became Power Rangers for the very first time. Here, instead of the Oozmen, you fight the Z-Putties, a few of Zed's monsters, Goldar, and Zed himself. And in the Zord battles, you play as the Thunder Megazord and Tiger Zord instead. I think this is pretty cool. It makes the game a bit more unpredictable in terms of the story, rather than just seeing the whole movie being retold in video game form. I wish this game had the Mega Tiger Zord though. And remember that subtle change I mentioned earlier? Well, here it is. You see the Ranger selection screen, but notice anything different? Instead of Rocky, Adam, and Aisha, it's Jason, Zack, and Trini! Although when you pick them, they still retain Rocky, Adam, and Aisha's voices. Lord Zed here is kinda disappointing. All he does is use his hand, and once you beat him, that's it. Oh, and to reach him on this stage, you gotta break one of the rocks. Otherwise, you're gonna get stuck fighting putties until you die. The graphics are very good. Despite what I said earlier about the Rangers not wearing their movie suits, all the characters here resemble their TV show and movie counterparts, and all the Rangers have nearly accurate body types. The backgrounds look great too. And once again, like the first Genesis game, the cutscenes are awesome! They're 100% faithful to both the TV show and the movie. And I especially love the Zord sequences. And the music, the music, the music! I think it's easily the best soundtrack thus far. You know why? Because it has 16-bit renditions of the entire Mighty Morphin Power Rangers soundtrack from Ron Wasserman. Well, almost entirely. If any of you have heard his songs, you'll instantly recognize him here. Here, let me play some samples. All in all, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the movie for the Genesis is a solid beat-em-up, and if you're a fan of both Power Rangers and beat-em-ups, I definitely recommend this one. I give it a gold. Next up is Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the movie for the Super Nintendo, also released in 1995. The intro here is awesome as well, but I feel the Genesis version intro is more dynamic, although the sound quality of the theme song is much better here. And look at this! Featuring Ivan Ooze, trademark. I want you to keep that in mind because although this game is named after the movie, it has nothing to do with the movie. Absolutely nothing, apart from Ivan Ooze himself. The majority of the game is based on Season 2. 
Matter of fact, I think this game is its own thing. I will say this though, this game is much better than the first Super Nintendo game. Like the Genesis version, you get to choose between any of the six rangers. But this time, like the first Super Nintendo game, they all start off in their human forms. Though, it's a little different here. And as you can see, Billy's sprite is recycled from the first Super Nintendo game. And it's great to finally see Tommy in a Super Nintendo Power Rangers game, even as the White Ranger. This game is similar to the first Super Nintendo game, but with a few improvements. For starters, you can switch between the top and bottom part of each stage with the shoulder buttons. This is helpful for avoiding attacks from monsters from one side and getting hit by cars. And like the Genesis version, this game has two player co-op. You can tell at the bottom of the screen. Also, you see that power meter down there? You can fill that up by collecting lightning bolts, collect enough of them and you can do your special attack. Did Adam just do the Hadouken? Yeah! He did! He just did the Hadouken! I've never seen any of the Rangers do attacks like that in the TV series. Not in human form at least. But don't use up too much of your power meter because you're gonna need it when that meter gets full. And when that happens, it's morphin' time! Enemies that took two hits to kill now only take one. But if you didn't collect enough lightning bolts by the time you reach the boss, don't worry. Morphing here is automatic. Once again, the controls are simple and responsive. You have two types of attacks. Y for your normal attack, and X for your special attack and to morph into your ranger form. Pressing X while holding up or down on the D-pad will allow you to perform different punches and kicks. Each of the six rangers have their own individual moves. For example, Aisha does the split kick and Kimberly likes to slap people around. However, in ranger form, they all use the same attacks, a straight punch and an uppercut, though the uppercut is pretty cool and does a lot of damage. The rangers do use their signature weapons but only when their power meter is full. And when that happens, your power meter starts to drain. That's kind of disappointing because in all the other games, you can use your weapons by doing different combos. Another gripe I have with this game is the low health meter. All the other games give you long health meters, but here, it's so tiny. Lose all 5 bars, and you're done. But with those issues, the game becomes more challenging. And I gotta admit, I took quite a beating in many parts. I lost a lot of lives and continues, but I managed to beat it. It's about time we get a hard Power Rangers game. I do hate the third stage though. There are a total of 6 stages, and throughout the game, you fight different types of enemies including different colored Z putties and mechs. Every stage feels fresh and gives you a different level of difficulty. I especially love stage 5. It reminds me of Metal Slug in Contra. The first 6 bosses are Mirror Maniac, Cannon Top, Skellarena, Magnet Brain, Silverhorn, and Mainframe, who is a... Giant... Brain? This has gotta be the lamest and most unoriginal boss I've ever seen. But after all that, the final stage is against the man himself, Ivan Ooze. All the bosses here have their own patterns, and if you follow them, it should be pretty easy to beat. Even Ivan Ooze is like this. And once you beat Ivan Ooze, it's finally over. But wait! You gotta escape! Hurry, let's go, let's go, let's go, 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 hurry, 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 gotta go! Hurry, run, 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 go, 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 hurry! Hurry, 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 go, run, 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 go, 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 you gotta make it, gotta make it, hurry, hurry, hurry! And you made it just in the nick of time. And here we see the Ninja Megazord. The only time you will ever see him in the game. And that's another thing. Why are there no Zord battles in this game? All the other games had Zord battles. Hell, even the crappy Game Boy game had them. Man, that just sucks, man. Fortunately, the next one on the Super Nintendo made up for that, but we'll get to that one a little bit later. The graphics are good, all the teenagers resemble who they're supposed to be. However, once again, in Ranger form, they all have the same body type. Big and muscular. Even the female rangers have this body type, I mean come on! But hey, at least the backgrounds look cool and they put more detail into the monsters and villains. I love the morphing sequences though, they look 100% show accurate, I mean just look at the detail here. The music is great. Even though this doesn't use Ron Wasserman songs like the Genesis version, its own soundtrack sounds fantastic. All the songs here sound very intense and fit Power Rangers perfectly. 
I especially love the boss battle combined with the boss introduction theme. It gives a little Mega Man X vibe to it. All in all, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the movie for the Super Nintendo is pretty damn good. Definitely better than the first Super Nintendo game. However, I still think the Genesis version is better, as it has more content from the third season and the movie. That, and it's more of a true beat-em-up. Still, it's worth picking up. I give it a silver. Next up is Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the movie for the Game Boy, also released in 1995. Just like the first Game Boy game, this game can be played in color using the Super Game Boy on the Super Nintendo. Play it on any other Game Boy and you get a black and white screen. And right off the bat, on the Super Game Boy the title screen looks very impressive. In fact, it almost looks like an NES game. Although on the bottom of the logo it looks like it says the newbie with an N but whatever. What we really want to know is, is the game itself an improvement over the first Game Boy game? Oh, ooh! Now you can choose any boss in any order, just like Mega Man. But the order you complete them doesn't really matter since you're not going to steal their powers. You can't pick Ivan Ooze yet though, so you only have 5 stages to pick at first. More than, from the movie, Queen Tengu, also from the movie, Man-Sized Rat, which I believe is based on the rat monster from the episode when Evil Green Ranger returned to fight the White Ranger, Goldar, and Lord Zed. Like all the other games, you get to choose between any of the six rangers, but here, you start off in their ninjeti form. Now immediately, you think they all use the same exact sprite but with different colors, but if you look closely, you can see some of them have longer hair, shorter hair, and different poses. Gameplay wise, it's a lot better than the first Game Boy game and I'm glad it is. That being said though, it's not a great game by any means. In fact, I'd say this one is rather average. The first improvement you'll notice is that the putties at least try to fight back against you. Unlike in the first game where they just walk towards you and that's it. In addition, there are newer enemies to fight, including robots. And you know what this reminds me of? The Technodrome stage in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3, The Manhattan Project on the NES. Just the way the robots come out. Control wise, it's a lot like the first Game Boy game. You have your B button for attacks and A button to jump. And for some reason, the attacks you do here are random. Sometimes you punch and sometimes you kick. But the addition of a power meter is an improvement over the first game. You fill this up by beating up enemies. And once your power meter is full, it's morphin time! And when you fill it up again, you can now do your special attack. This is especially useful when fighting bosses because of the amount of damage. Sadly, once again, the rangers don't use their signature weapons. And what's even sadder is when Tommy morphs into the white ranger, he poses with Saba, but he doesn't use it during gameplay. With a grand total of 6 stages, each stage feels somewhat fresh with all the different traps and enemies. But beware of Queen Tengu's stage. There's this truck with spikes that comes after you while you're digging through this wall and you gotta rapidly press your attack button and then duck while pressing the attack button really really fast or else you'll die repeatedly. Think you can handle that? In the very last stage before fighting Ivan Ooze, you fight the first 5 bosses again. Just like Mega Man. They're exactly the same as before, so if you beat them before, you can beat them again. And after that, you finally face Dr. Wily, I mean Ivan Ooze. Twice. All the bosses here have very predictable patterns, which make them easy to beat. Even Ivan Ooze is like this. So once you memorize them, you should have no problem beating them. Goldar is a bit frustrating though, as he likes to slash you with his sword repeatedly. No mercy. And what's really sad about this is that Lord Zed is way easier than him, and he's supposed to be the main villain. Like the Super Nintendo version, there are no Zord battles whatsoever. So while this game may be better than the crappy first Game Boy game, at least that game had Zord battles. The graphics here look very good for a Game Boy game, especially on the Super Game Boy. All the backgrounds look great, the logos and menu screens look dynamic, and all the monsters resemble their TV show and movie counterparts. But most importantly, Goldar actually looks like Goldar this time! As for the Rangers themselves, as I said earlier, in Ninjetti form, they look just fine. But in Ranger form, once again, they all have the same body type. 
Again, this is expected due to Game Boy's hardware limitations. Also, are those supposed to be the movie suits? They don't even look like them. They look more like Samus from Metroid or something. The music is also pretty good. All the songs here sound very energetic. The theme song from Zed Stage stands out to me the most because of how catchy it sounds. All in all, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the movie for the Game Gear is surprisingly decent. You might enjoy it for a bit, but that's it. But if you ever feel like playing it, at least play it on the Super Game Boy for the true experience. I give it a bronze. Next up is Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the movie for the Game Gear, also released in 1995. And if you think this game plays anything like the first one on the Game Gear, well, you're absolutely correct. This game is actually a direct sequel to that. Almost everything in this game is identical to the first game, from the menus, to the graphics, and of course the gameplay. You know the old saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. The differences here is that all the monsters, villains, and zords were replaced with the ones from season 2 and the movie, and of course the green ranger was replaced with the white ranger. The white ranger is incredibly fun to play as, he does these awesome attacks with his Saba. Jason, Zack, and Trini are also replaced in the character selection screen in single player, but like in the first game, it's just a cosmetic thing. All five of the core rangers look and play exactly the same as they did in the first game. There are virtually no differences. Hell, even Goldar is exactly the same. There are a total of six stages. The first three stages are based on season two of the series. Here, you fight the Z Putties and Goldar. But during boss battles, you fight with the Thunder Megazord, who is very powerful and does many attacks with a sword that does a lot of damage. The first three bosses are Beancaster, Goldar, and the Jaws of Destruction. However, the last three stages all take place in the movie. You start off fighting against a bunch of Ooze men, but after that, Ivan Ooze attacks you and destroys the command center. Now the last two stages are Zord battles with Ninja Megazord against Hornetron and Ivan Ooze merged with the Ectomorphicon. And after you beat them, the game ends just like it does in the movie and the Sega Genesis version. The Thunder and Ninja Megazords are both really fun to play as, but I still prefer playing as the Battle Mode Dragon Zord in the first game. Also, I wish this game included the Tiger Zord and Mega Tiger Zord as well. Hell, throw the Red Dragon Thunder Zord in there too! That disappointed me because Ban Presto was generous enough to include the Battle Mode Dragon Zord in the first game. So I thought they'd include the aforementioned Zords in this one. Oh well, what can you do? Once again, the Rangers use their TV show suits instead of the movie suits, but at this point, it's pretty much expected. The music has improved as well. It uses 8-bit versions of Ron Wasserman's songs, similar to the soundtrack in the Genesis version. All in all, another great Power Rangers game. Not quite as good as the first one, but still just as fun. I give it a gold. We now come to the final Mighty Morphin Power Rangers game from the 16-bit era. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers The Fighting Edition. Released in 1995 exclusively for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. This is easily one of the best Power Rangers games ever made. Right up there with the Game Gear and Genesis games. Finally, a Super Nintendo Power Rangers game that is awesome. It's a one-on-one -on -one contemporary fighting game that focuses entirely on Zord battles. You can now play as all the Megazords from Season 2 and 3, as well as the main villains, and a couple of monsters. It's got excellent controls, tight combos that allow you to do powerful moves that do an insane amount of damage, great graphics, great music, and just all-around fun. Like the movie on the Super Nintendo, the music here is composed by Hiroyuki Iwatsuki and Haruo Ohashi, and both games use the same exact sound font along with Car Ranger and its counterpart Gundam Wing Endless Duel on the Super Famicom. You have three different modes, you can choose to beat the story mode which is actually an arcade mode, versus your friend in fighting mode, or practice in trial mode. And the final boss in story mode is none other than Ivan Ooze, who will absolutely murder you if you don't know how to beat him. 
Trust me, I got my ass kicked several times because of all the powers he uses against me. But once I figured it out, I finally beat him. And you can play as him too, by beating the game on hard to unlock a code, which I didn't bother doing. If you want to see my full review of this game, check out my video titled Mighty Morphin Gundam Rangers from way back in 2011, where I compare this game to its Japanese counterpart, Gundam Wing Endless Duel. Nevertheless, if you're a Power Rangers fan and a fighting game fan, I highly recommend this game. It's an underrated gem. I still give it a gold. Oh, and if you're wondering who developed all the Super Nintendo Power Rangers games, it was actually Natsume. Bandai was just a publisher. Now for all you Genesis slash Mega Drive fans out there who were disappointed that this game didn't come out to your system, don't worry, I've got a treat for you, but I'm saving that for another video. And I think you know what I'm talking about. Thought it was over yet? Well, you thought wrong. There was actually one more Mighty Morphin Power Rangers game release. 22 years later. Just two months before the release of the Power Rangers reboot in theaters, Bandai Namco released Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Mega Battle in 2017. And it was released as a digital download only game for the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Is it any good? Well, that's what we're about to find out. Similar to the older Power Rangers games, this is a 2D side-scrolling beat-em-up. Of course, this game's graphics uses high-res sprites instead of 16-bit pixels, but take a look at it. You may not like it. I mean, I like the art style, but the animation just doesn't look right at all. In fact, it looks like an indie game that was made in Adobe Flash or something, and everybody here just moves really stiff and awkward. In fact, it kind of hinders the gameplay a bit. That being said though, I did enjoy this game quite a bit. Well, except for one part, but I'll get to that in a moment. Controls are responsive, and you can do more combos and moves as you level up your ranger. The higher the level your ranger is, the more damage the enemies will take. There's quite a variety of enemies to fight here, unlike in the earlier games where you mostly fought putties. Of course, the putties are here as well, but you also have the Tengas from Season 3, and even some Monsters of the Wii characters like Nasty Knight, Twin Man, and Madam Woe. I think those are the Tengas, but I'm not 100% sure. Okay, so now about the story in this game. The story here is based on Season 1 and parts of Season 2, but it seems that it's writing its own version of the story. It starts off with the five teenagers heading towards the spaceship that just crash landed. There, they see some kind of gem. Kimberly grabs a hold of it, and all of a sudden, putties start coming out. After more putties start to come out, they are immediately teleported to the command center by Zordon. And I think you know exactly what happens here, so let's skip this part. So anyway, after the rangers morph and fight all the enemies, a strange tower appears in the city. This tower summons one of Rita's monsters, King Sphinx. Soon after, the rangers meet Rita Repulsa for the very first time, and she promises to defeat the rangers. But of course, the rangers don't give up that easy. After defeating King Sphinx and a bunch of other monsters, the rangers learn that the connection to the morphing grid has weakened, which causes them to lose their zords and their ability to teleport. Which means they now have to get to the tower on foot. Damn, that sucks. From here, the rangers meet Tommy as the Green Ranger, but soon after, Lord Zed comes in and immediately kicks out Rita. Now they have to face a much tougher opponent. So yeah, that's the main premise of this game. I won't spoil the rest of the story since the game is still fairly recent. You have a grand total of 6 stages, each containing 3 parts, so that's practically 18 stages, which is good. The 6 bosses here are King Sphinx, Turban Shell, Lord Zed, Cardiotron slash Hatchosaurus, Goldar, and Lord Zed again. And the second half of the boss battle is a Megazord battle, and this is the part I hate the most. The Megazord battle SUCK! This is by far the worst Zord battle in the history of Power Rangers games. Hell, they're even worse than the mecha battles in Super Sentai Battle Ranger Cross for the Wii. So what's wrong with it exactly? Three words. Quick time events. All you gotta do is press all the buttons on the screen and that's it. Yup, that's it. 
Man, that just sucks. And I wish there was a way to disable these parts. There's also the Megazord in tank mode, but that sucks too. This game also has 4 player couch co-op, so if you want to play with a friend, you can do that. But the biggest disappointment this game has is the lack of online co-op. I mean, why did they not include that? It just doesn't make any sense. You can play as all 6 original rangers, but you can also play as the white ranger. The White Ranger, along with Rocky, Adam, Aisha, and Catherine are all available as DLC. However, playing as them has no effect on the story or even the Zord battles. It's exactly the same. Also, when playing as Rocky, Adam, Aisha, or Kat, they play exactly the same as Jason, Zach, Trini, and Kimberly. Even their levels are the same. The music in this game is mostly generic rock playing, although it does contain some songs and even background music from the TV series. Oh, and if you think this game has voices of the original cast, don't get too excited. It's just recycled audio from the series. All in all, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Mega Battle is... okay. I don't necessarily recommend it, but I'm not telling you to avoid it either. But if you ever do feel like buying this game, Buy it as soon as possible. With the recent Hasbro acquisition, it's only a matter of time before it gets pulled from the PlayStation Store and Xbox Live Marketplace. It's currently 15 US dollars on both, and the DLC is only 1 US dollar. If it wasn't for the Megazord battles and the animation, I would have easily given this a silver. But alas, that didn't happen. So, I give it a bronze. Oh, and a little fun fact. A Steam version was planned, but it seems they quietly cancelled it. Not sure why they did that though. What's also weird is that they said it would come out later in 2017, but that never happened. It's a shame too, because there would have been some cool mods, and we would finally get an official Mighty Morphin Power Rangers game on PC. Plus they might have included online co-op this time. Why you do this Bandai Namco? Why you disappointed me? But, at the same time, PC gamers are not missing out on much. So we finally come to the conclusion of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers games retrospective. As we saw, the quality of these games vary. You may like some, you may hate some. But one thing is certain, there were a lot of Power Rangers games. And more games based on later seasons are still being made to this very day. But the fact that Mighty Morphin alone had so many games just shows how iconic that series is. With that being said, happy 25th anniversary to the Power Rangers. So what do you guys think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And if you want to know my thoughts on the Jude Ranger game for the Famicom, check out my Super Sensei games retrospective also from 2011. And be sure to check out the bootleg episode of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers for the Famicom from last year, contains strong language. I'm AliRx, and may the power protect you. If you like my content and want to support me, you can donate to my Patreon for just $1 a month. Go to patreon.com forward slash AliRx, or search AliRx on the Patreon app for mobile devices. If you prefer a one-time donation, you can donate to my PayPal at paypal.me forward slash AliRx or send to AliRx at gmail.com on the PayPal app for mobile devices. There, you can donate any amount, even a penny. Links are in the description.